back at my secret spot. I love this place. It just makes you feel like you're on your own. Take care of yourself. Feels good. This is going to be about the end of this series. Finding uh, the legal points of being a drone pilot. Um, there's some concerns you have to be aware of. Uh, in the beginning, I had a bad experience because the public wasn't too excited about seeing me show up all of a sudden flying a, a drone around. And it looked like I was up to, up to no good. So I wanted to uh, use this time to uh, maybe end a five-part series of beginners drone piloting series. I might dive in later when I have more time. But to touch, uh, to end this series and the, uh, the business aspect of drone piloting, I will probably uh, film and produce later. But for now, I'll just uh, leave everyone with these thoughts over the next few minutes about the uh, public aspect of becoming a drone pilot. The beginning was uh, a learning phase for me. I learned that um, I shouldn't be just walking up to a place and flying. Um, I tried doing it at the airport. That's how silly I was. Um, but um, I learned quickly and got to speak to the FAA about how to do it right. And ever since, I've enjoyed it more. But I did have more issues with the public, private citizens who weren't understanding what I was doing. Why would I be flying a drone right by their property or near it or above it, beyond it? Um, it to the point where I almost quit trying and I want you to know that what I did is I became more determined each and every time uh, to find a way to make it right. And I learned that it was through safety and through um, high visibility before the fact. I got the vest, FAA, commercially licensed drone pilot, do not disturb. I built a sign, commercial flight in progress, do not disturb. I bought a cone. I had my license photocopied multiple times to hand out if necessary. I have a little sign on a clipboard that tells people, local law enforcement, please call this number. Do not interrupt this flight. I have a website now. It's very crude and basic, but it's a place that I can send people if they walk up to me and they try to take the controller out of my hand. Yes, I have had that happen. Why am I rambling all this on to you? Because I want you to understand if you don't start right, you may quit before you have a chance to enjoy it. So tr please treat my words not as some sort of criticism of how you may be doing it right now, but think of it as I learned a lesson. I learned some hard lessons and thankfully I didn't give up. And now I enjoy it a lot more. So that's probably something you might want to consider being that I tried to do it the right way and I believed I was being professional about it, but in the end, it didn't matter what my perception was. It was the perception of the uh, person that didn't like what I was doing. And I want you to know now that I have all of my s safety aspect features in place when I fly. I haven't had a problem since. People are very embracing. They approach me nicely. They understand what's going on well before they get to where I'm at. And, uh, and then it turns into a nice conversation as long as I'm not flying. Because if I am flying, you, you really need to make sure the public is aware that they should not be speaking to you. Um, right back around full circle safety should always be a part of the, of the subject and of the conversation. When you're flying, never allow someone to speak to you. Be as kind as you can about it. But you should have a vest on that you can point to. You should, really. Even a hobbyist. Because if you're in the air with a drone, it's a dangerous act. Just plain and simple. It's a dangerous act to take a quadcopter that's spinning at 11,000 RPMs like knife blades. I still have scars on my forearm where I had the drone drift too quickly next to me. And it only took a moment and it cut, cut me right up. Um, that was in the beginning before I learned. I had to go through mistakes to learn. And it c almost cost me, like I mentioned earlier my happiness as far as enjoying this passion to where I am now. So take your time, always think safety and 
and safety and you'll be doing the right thing. Hopefully this is enough narrative for me to put some slides together to show you what I mean when I talk about safety and always having that to being a part of even when you interact with the public, even before you leave your house, even when you plan that flight the night before, even when you're looking at Google Maps the week before because you think maybe that might be a nice spot. Think about the public and who you're going to affect. That's why I'm here right now. I'm not affecting anyone. These are nice, calm flights when I fly out here. A few of my videos are from near here. I did my twilight training here. It, it's a special place to me because no one disturbs me. I love to be in the public filming when they enjoy it and they embrace it. But when they reject it, it, it hurts as an artist. But understandable why, because they don't understand what I'm trying to do in that moment. And it's my responsibility to demonstrate to the public what I'm about to do when I am performing a commercial flight. And you should too, as a drone pilot, even just a hobbyist. I believe hobbyists should have to get a license. I believe that the laws are close to that right now. It's some sort of a safety test, but that's important. It, it's important because you will enjoy it more and you don't even know it. <laughs>